Muy buenos días. Good morning, everyone. Before we start, let me mention a couple of uh, security measures. If we were to evacuate, there are four exits behind you and two uh, to the side, so that uh, in in front of you, so that you can leave uh, if there's an emergency. Um, I welcome. So uh, our Master point is uh, in uh, Entrada Mañanitas, where you came in. Now, I welcome you to the opening session of LACNIC 37 in the second day of a hybrid event. It's an honor for LACNIC to be able to have over 140 remote participants uh, and uh, over 390 in-person uh, participants. Thank you for being with us. Let me tell you that today we're going to start with uh, the opening ceremony, and then we'll have a panel on the four technical uh, dimensions of the internet and uh, the first part of uh, the LACNIC's uh, technical forum. So without further ado, let me invite uh, Alejandro Guzman, president of the board of LACNIC, for the official opening of LACNIC 37. Alejandro. You have the floor. Dear um, respected local authorities, members of the board, uh, local and in-person and uh, remote participants, members of LACNIC, as well as the sponsors and the rest of uh, the members of the LACNIC internet community with us today. For me, it's a great pleasure to welcome you in Colombia. This is uh, my homeland. and. Uh, uh, I welcome you to LACNIC 37. This is the third event that takes place in Colombia. The first one was in Medellin in 2013. That was LACNIC 19. Two and a half years later, we went to Bogota, where we had LACNIC uh, uh, 34 in 2015. And now we are in Cali in LACNIC 37. When we organized the first meeting in Colombia back in 2013, there were fewer than 100 Colombian associations uh, um, members of LACNIC, and that is now five times as high because we have 465 operators, universities, network operators, and academic networks. That So the community in Colombia is dynamic and is always trying to provide the best services to the members in the country. In addition, not only do we have the members and the community in Colombia, but also in the region, and ever since since there were 1,200 members, uh, and today we have 12,200. So it, we have 10 times as many in this time. This year, this is a very special year for LACNIC and for the community. First of all, because this year LACNIC is celebrating its 20th anniversary in October 20. 2002, so we have 20 years of history building together so that the entire region may have more chances to have access to information through the internet. In addition to that, we also have something very special, and it is that we come back to in-person events, something that we missed so much these two last years. And we have that combination with uh, the remote uh, virtual uh, event, uh, and uh, thanks to the pandemic, we got used to new ways of communicating with each other, and now we keep the two. So those of us who could come are here, but we are also connected online with people elsewhere in the world. For LACNIC, it's really been very important for us to continue to be connected, whatever the circumstances, and that is why in the last uh, two years, the organization uh, tried very hard to disrupt uh, the uh, community activities the least uh, possible. And you, you may have seen the great effort for the uh, online space to give uh, spaces for to learn and to be, to remain in touch and collaborate. As a matter of fact, the number of people that registered for the event and the combination of the two, we have over uh, 1,100 uh, people registered, 50% of local and 50% remote participants. That shows that we are really 
changing things and we can integrate more people. In addition to that, we have two local hubs. One is in Cavase in Argentina, and the other one in uh, Port-au-Prince, in Lacnic, uh, in uh, Haiti. So we are very happy that uh, more people can uh, uh, leverage of the uh, local networking in those places. As a matter of fact, this is one of the things that uh, we wanted to tell you. One of the things that we miss is the cap capability of having networking. And so we need to try to do our hardest uh, efforts to talk about, about technical or personal or plans. Uh, that is a possibility that we have uh, in an event like this. We have several tools that can be of help. As a matter of fact, there are events uh, for all week that uh, let us connect uh, technically and uh, socially. But we also have tools, including, for instance, in the app, we have video calls, one-to-one -one video calls to coordinate meetings. And we also have the possibility of agreeing uh, meetings through the app. We have the cocktails, the social events. So we also have Discord for those who want to use that tool. And in social media with the hashtag, hashtag LACNIC37, you can also share what's going on, what you think, and would uh, give us your feedback of this event. I'd also like to tell you what's going to happen the rest of the week. We already had some tutorials yesterday and day before yesterday, but we'll have others uh, during the week, such as interconnection, data centers, IPv6, uh, resource administration, security, routing security, among others. After the opening session, we have a very interesting panel that is based on uh, the uh, survey conducted uh, between uh, APNIC and LACNIC uh, uh, last year about uh, the uh, the engines that drive the success of the internet as a platform. So we'll be very happy to listen to the next uh, report. And then we have the LACNIC Technical Forum. We, we have a range of different topics where we can learn and see how others are implementing things that we might be willing to do uh, implement in our organizations. We have the Public Policy Forum, a space for participation, where we define how we want uh, the uh, resources to be uh, assigned in a region and we invite you to participate listening with or, or actively with comments or contributing with policy we also have on friday we have a slot for the uh, network of, for lacnog it's an organization that uh, incorporated recently so uh, this will be the first meeting as an incorporated uh, organization. So my congratulations to LACNOG. And then we also have a chance to have, have a meeting of uh, ISPs and expansion and uh, one for the Colombian uh, network operator. So there is, it's going to be a busy week. My suggestion would be to look at the complete agenda and uh, to try to uh, write down what you don't want to miss during the week. Um, but we also have side events because the opportunities, um, uh, we, we are having things at the same time, lack like IX this week and the peering forum that was held yesterday, the first uh, symposium. And I'd also like to remind you of something that we have emphasized for many years, the importance of deploying IPv6 in our region. It's uh, something that is absolutely essential to ensure the growth of the internet in the years to come. Let me remind you that already two years ago, LACNIC announced that IPv4 addresses had been depleted. So ever since, even though LACNIC continues to assign addresses, these come from recovered resources. And it's not too many. We recover them. They are in quarantine for six months, and only then are they assigned. And they and you have to assign them to the waiting list that grows and grows. And now it has more than 700 organizations waiting to get their IPv4 addresses. The latest, uh, 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 it, the waiting time is 475 days uh, to get to recover. Uh, to get uh, recovered uh, IPv6, uh, uh, IPv4 uh, resources. So we uh, waiting for IPv4 resources uh, is not the best 
Uh, so it, it, although it's good uh, resources, so we need to implement IPv6 and make sure that we are available to continue to grow. As a matter of fact, in these years of LACNIC, we have assigned more than 190 million addresses on the internet. So in the um, region, we have over 400 million users, but we just have 1 million addresses available, and we still have to connect 240 million additional people in the region. So mm, the, mm, uh, the arithmetic tells us that we need much more if we wish to grow. In addition to the technical aspects and the opportunity to meet here, we invite you that if you have the opportunity to keep save some time to get to know something of the country, its culture, and its cuisine. Let me tell you about some of the things that you might not know. Colombia is the country with the largest biodiversity in the world and the second country with the absolute amount of biodiversity. Colombia also has the largest number of birds, reptiles, and amphibians in the world, so we have an immense diversity. It has the one of the uh, most aromatic coffee varieties in the world, so we invite you to ask for a coffee. And ask for tintico, which is a small cup of coffee, and if you like it, take a couple of coffees to home. We have the highest palm trees there in the valley of Cotora, which is not so far away. This was the landscape where the movie Encanto was uh, recorded. We also have the most pure emeralds in the world. So if you have enough money and you wish to take a jewel from Colombia, emeralds are an option. It's also the largest producers of carnations and roses in the world. We are located in the valley of Cauca, the Cauca Valley, which is one of the largest, it is the largest sugar cane producer in the country. We are surrounded by sugarcane plantations. We also produce good run, rum and other types of delicious foods that are based on sugarcane. And don't leave before you try some typical things, such as the juice of the fruit lulo or lulava. We also have vena caliña pan de bono, a delicious bread, champús, which is not a shampoo, it's a beverage that you can try here, manjar blanco, mango viche, so a whole variety of delicious options that are typical of Colombian cuisine. And don't leave before seeing a salsa show. Salsa is a world capital of salsa dance. This week, I suspect we'll have the opportunity of learning a couple of steps of this most interesting dance. So there is a lot of thing. There are a lot of things that you can do this week, from the technical, social, and fun points of view. And to finish, I'd like to thank Enkali, who Enkali is the local host of the event, the sponsors who have helped us to make this event possible, to all the participants, both remote and in person and because they're active in all the possible spaces. This is how we can continue strengthening and building the internet. Finally, I would especially like to thank on behalf of the board to the staff of LACNIC who have worked tirelessly during the pandemic so that things could continue working. And also, and also during this event, the complexity of the event has become more complex. We have virtual hubs, we have Zoom connection, YouTube connection, in addition to local coordination. So this is a tireless job that is done by LACNIC staff. We are most grateful to them. And they, could, they even had to serve food yesterday in order to meet the requirements of the meeting. So welcome to LACNIC 37, and we hope this will be a wonderful week to all for all. Thank you, Alejandro. So we now continue with the opening ceremony, and I have the pleasure of introducing two people mentioned by Alejandro Guzman. We have the ISOC chapter 
from Kabase and Haiti. Let me remind you that the hubs, hubs are networking options between members of the technical community through which participation can be done in different points of the region. So I will now introduce Oscar Mesano, who is a secretary of the Argentine Chamber of Argentina, who is at the hub in Cabase. Welcome, Oscar. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to be with you at the LACNIC 37 meeting. And really, I am somehow I somehow feel envy because we couldn't travel personally. The agenda for this week is extraordinary, both from the social and the technological point of view. So we'll be following you throughout the week together with the people who are here with us, as well as with the remote participants. I am sure that this will be a hybrid meeting. So my greetings to LACNIC's president and to the entire board, as well as to all the participants, and we'll be able to interact during this week. So th that is what I wish to share with you. So we'll be following you with great pleasure. Thank you for allowing us to participate in this panel. Thank you very much, Oscar, and a big round of applause to you to all those who are participating from the hub in Argentina. We'll now introduce Stephanie Joseph, who is a chair of the ISOC chapter in Haiti. She is at the hub, hub in Port-au-Prince. Stephanie? Welcome, Stephanie. Go ahead, please. I'm a member in the community of Latin. It's an honor for me to welcome you on the second day of Latin 37 event and also the first local hub in Haiti. This year, the event is being held in Cali, and we have this opportunity to attend it at this remote hub. LACNIC 37 is one of the most important internet events in the region, which bring together experts and representatives of acad academic, civil society, private sector, government and telecommunication industry professional. And this year, LACNIC 37 emphasizes this term toward more secure interconnection and peering. And two different session participants will be able to learn how to use tool to interconnect in a secure way. And the connection tutorial will analyze the foundation business relationship and technical aspect of traffic exchange, pairing and CDNs. It's important to know how to secure our traffic when pairing. To finish, I would like to thank LACMIC, our main partner of the organization of this hub. Each participant who expressed the desire to join off, aspect who welcome us, and the board of Isaac Haiti chapter who work to make this day successful. Together, we are going to have a good day of learning, practicing, discovery, and networking as well. I wish you a good participation as the event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alejandro. We now inaugurate LACNIC 37.